Welcome to another Sunday night service on ASI. I hope you will be blessed by the end of this service. Tune in, sit, relax as we worship God on this Sunday evening. Let's take a posture of prayer as we pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for bringing us here tonight. Guide us, protect us, keep us. May we be blessed by the service tonight and be revived, renewed, and refreshed to go into the new week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Angels we have heard on high Singing sweetly through the night And the mountains in reply Echoing their brave delight oh, 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 oh. We are in Tobago, and during his formative years, he attended Scarborough SDA Primary School. When you speak to him, he's sure to let you know he's a proud product of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. He's husband to one wife and father to two daughters and loves his family. He also loves sharing the good news of Jesus. Elder Casper Francis has previously shared the gospel right here on ASI Media Tobago. And so we are delighted to have him with us again. Elder Francis is the current principal of Westport Seventh-day Adventist Primary School right there in Digo Martin, Trinidad. He, also, he is also an elder at the Five Rivers SDA Church and is one of the leaders of the Pathfinder Marching Band Association of the Southern Caribbean Conference. 
Let us give an attentive ear as the Holy Spirit uses him, and may we all be blessed. Pleasant evening, everyone, and uh, may I say compliments of the season to you. I hope that this extra time that you have with your family is spent in reflection and uh, really enjoying the blessings of God. As we begin this evening's presentation, I ask you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we ask that you help us to understand your word and your goodness and your love towards us as we listen to what you have to say to us this evening. For Christ's sake, amen. You know, my topic this evening is called, What Child Is This? What Child Is This? You know, Proverbs 20, verse 11 says, Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. You know, some of us believe that controversy and the conflict in God's work started in our time. You know, sometimes we become despondent when we witness it. But controversy in God's work is not a new phenomenon. The backdrop of this message starts 
with everything going wrong. The kings that the children of Israel begged for and insisted on took them down a disastrous road. Is that any wonder that when God had foretold that it would end up this way? You know, everyone of noble birth had to die. And who was the person causing all this chaos? Queen Atalia. What a woman. Let us read in 2 Chronicles 22.10. But when Atalia, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. Here we see a woman so hungry for power that she was willing to kill her own family. These would have been her young nephews, even her own grandsons. Young children, it mattered not to her. Mercy, have mercy. That's what happens when we take our eyes off the divine one. When we shift our focus from heavenly things and we start to chase the temporal things of life. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life can quickly turn a just and righteous human being into a thief, a murderer, an idolater, and even an adulterer. And someone who is placed in a position to carry on the work, like Queen Atalia, ends up in direct opposition to the will of God. But you know what? But this evening, I want to thank God that in every situation, there is always a reason to be grateful. I thank God this evening that there's a God who sits high and sees low. Amen. I thank God that the king had a daughter. Second Chronicles 22, 11 and 12 tells us, But Jehoshabet, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabet, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada, the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Atalia, so that they slew him not. And he was with them, verse 12, hid in the house of God six years, and Atalia reigned over the land. You know, there is an important lesson here I don't want you to miss. Someone who knew better took a person who was in need of safety to the house of God. We understand that there is only one place where we can find the assurance of safety in this wicked world. If we know that this is where safety can be found, then it is our responsibility to bring those around us who are in danger to the place where they can find safety. Bring their names before the altar or bring them physically, but bring them nonetheless. The world is in need of a savior. You know, Jehoshaphat had the good sense to take baby Joash and hide him in the house of the Lord. During that time, Joash was so well hidden that Queen Atalia didn't have an inclination that he was alive. You know, that reminds me of the text written by the Psalms, written by David in Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. When you are hidden under a rock, you literally have to go and tell your enemies, hi, 
I'm here. If anyone who can keep your whereabouts a secret, it's God, for sure. You know, my topic this evening is, what child is this? Because you see, the first seven years are the formative years, and therefore absolutely crucial. What is so important about these first seven years? You know, 2 Chronicles 24, verse 1 and 2 says, Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name also was Zibia of Bathsheba. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. You know, here is what science has to say about the early developmental years of children. In the first five years of life, experiences and relationships stimulate children's development, creating millions of connections in their brains. In fact, children's brains develop connections faster in the first five years than in any other time in their lives. This is the time where the foundations of learning, health, and behavior throughout life are laid down. You know, that's science. But what about UNICEF? You know what UNICEF says? It says the first five years are the most important in the life of every child as they set the basis for overall success in life. They are very important for every society as this is the best chance to influence future prosperity, inclusiveness, and social stability. You know, while we as Seventh-day Adventists respect the opinions of the world, we hold true to, to firm to truths and even listen to what our people have to say. So one of my favorite authors, Ellen G. White, says something like this. Too much importance cannot be placed upon the early training of children. The lessons learned, the habits formed during the years of infancy and childhood have more to do with the formation of character and the direction of the life than all the instructions and training of the years after. So it talks to the fact that the first set of years form everything to flow smoothly after. Now, it's during the first years of a child's life that his mind is most susceptible to impressions of either good or evil. During these years, decided progress is made in either a good direction or a bad direction. The question can be asked, can we see this being true in the life of Joash? He certainly received the quality instructions from the hands of the priests, so much that it set him on a path the Bible refers to as doing right in the sight of the Lord. My dear viewers, isn't that the description we would love to hear from our young people? You know, what child is this? God orchestrated it in such a way that this little baby found the refuge with the priest. I can imagine while he spent his time with the priest in the temple there, he learned Bible verses. He learned Bible songs. Yeah? The history of the faith. Service to God through service to man. You know, these are the things that we purpose to instill in the students that enter into the gates of Tobago SDA primary schools and even our high school Harmon's SDA. Like the priest Jehoiada, we see it as our sacred duty to prepare with godly dedication the future leaders in our charge. It is the mission of our schools to help to prepare a quality human resource to carry the gospel forward. I and many others are examples of that. So many individuals of Tobago that I have met all over the world who attended one of our institutions 
are representing the church-based values and work ethics that we teach and preach as an organization. So let me give you a bit of my story. When I was young, I used to stay for holidays, every holiday sometimes, at Mr. Errol Phillips' home. He was the vice principal at, of Harmons at the time, Harmons SDA. And he would take us to the garden at Harmons. And we would plant, we would reap, we would gather vegetables, and we would go into Scarborough and sell vegetables to raise funds for the school. I want to let you know that even till today, I am now the principal of a Seventh-day Adventist school and still take part in activities of fundraising for the school I am working in today. Praise God for that example. Amen for that. You know, but someone may say and ask this question, why bother with all this church school thing? What's, what's this all about? How do we know that it's making any difference? Well, can I ask you to look at Joash again? Joash just didn't live right for himself. Joash concerned himself with the things of God. Joash was willing to attend to the needs of those around him, both physically and spiritually. He was willing to invest his mental energies in finding solutions to the problems. He kept on checking to see if the problem was solved. And when it wasn't, he made adjustments to find his intended goal. All this simply for something that he would never benefit from. He did it simply because it was God's business. His training was evident by his actions because he realized he was the one who refurbished Solomon's temple when it was depleted because of time and wear and tear. You know, the Tobago Mission Education System of Seventh-day Adventists is still in the business of producing quality human resources for this world and the next. The teachers, the principals, the auxiliary staff have cooperatively worked together to represent God's image in mankind. And we will strive to fulfill this purpose for which they were created. You know, the priest, Jehoiada, the priest, he took his job very seriously to train the next king of Israel in the way of the Lord. It's the same way we take our job seriously to prepare the next generation for taking the gospel message to the world. You know the Tobago schools were created with pioneers from right here in Tobago. And we are still here. The impact of a Christian school can never be underrated. The thousands of former students of our primary schools and Hammonds, where are they now? Where are they? They are in our workplaces, in our schools, in our communities all over the country and all over the world. We cannot accurately measure the impact of our children. There, some of them are even working for the church organization in various capacities. The values, the attitudes, and dispositions that we have equipped our students will aid them in any journey in life. The vast number of non seventh day Adventist homes that the gospel got into because the children attended one of our schools. It's something that we should take note of and not take for granted. The memory verses and doctrines that were taught and infused into children are often shared with the entire family. It's often said that raising a child is like baking a cake, and it's that time of the year. But you know what? You cannot tell the results of the cake until the end. And sometimes it's too late to make any adjustments. For those of us who, like me, I was raised in the village of Mason Hall, and while there, my granny, granny smart, would be making her cake butter around this time of the year. And when she was finished, 
I will fight with my sister to get to that bowl after and lick and taste the butter. And when we tasted it, we knew that the cake will come out good. What would happen is that this butter, with the taste in the spoon, will tell us that we would love to taste the final product. You know, although we cannot tell where a child will end up, even a child is known by his or her actions. This is why our schools were created to produce a special foundation, to create special children and a quality well-rounded child equipped to stand out, to be a leader in any space, to be mission-driven, and to continue to sp spread the good news of salvation. As I close, I say this to you, and listen carefully. The story of Joash did not have a fairy tale ending. After all, he was only human. He did not always listen to Jehoiada's counsel. He made mistakes, and he even paid for it with his very life. But the story is there in the Bible to assist us in our very own journey in this life. The point is, we can give our children the greatest advantages in this life. And the next, by allowing the home, the school, and church to connect with its philosophy on life and religion, especially in the formative years. This not, does not guarantee that an individual will not make different, differing decisions as an adult, but it will guarantee that the knowledge and wisdom and word of God was given to that child that attended a church school. God has been good to us all. And we continue to give him all the praise and glory. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This is the goal that we have, that our children will be trained in the Lord at our very homes, and at our very schools, and also at our churches, even at the Tobago Mission of Seventh-day Adventists. It is also essential that we form serious and deep connections between church and school. The pastors of our churches must lead this charge that and ensure that deeper and meaningful connections are made between church and school. The Tobago schools, John Roberts, North Regional, Charlottesville, Scarborough, and Hammond's High School are eternally grateful for the support of the churches of the Tobago Mission, the communities, and the parents of our Seventh-day Adventist community and Tobago at large. The Education Department remains focused in its commitment to continue the work that our pioneers have started, to continue to prepare children for this world and the one to come. One of my favorite authors, Ellen White, gave a famous quotation that I still firmly believe in, in that the work of redemption and education is one and the same. May we continue to be faithful until that great day when faith becomes sight and the Lord Jesus Christ returns triumphant at last. Bow your heads as we close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this message. May we understand the importance of educating our children in the right way. Even in Luke 2, 52 talks that and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Even Jesus' example shows us how important it is for us to be educated in the way of the Lord. Guide us, bless us. And may we continue to allow you to lead our lives as we go into the new year. Amen and amen. Happy holidays.